Welcome to Advent. The Christmas season is upon us. It is a time of eager anticipation as we look with awe and wonder toward that shining star in the sky that heralds the birth of Jesus. God becoming human so that he could sacrifice himself for the sins of the world. There's no question that Jesus' life altered the course of history. The church that spawned from Jesus' ministry has continued to impact the world in a myriad of ways. The sick are cared for, the hungry are fed, and community needs are met by churches that are striving to live out their call to live like Jesus. But there's a dark side to that coin too. Throughout history, the church has proven that it is capable of creating division among the people, seeking power and control and committing heinous acts of violence. It's a dichotomy that seems impossible. How can an institution that is built on the commandment to love God and love your neighbor as yourself be capable of causing so much harm on a global scale? For our answer, let's look to the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. I'm reading here from Eugene Peterson's The Message translation. It says this, Walking down the street, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, working while the sun shines. When night falls, the workday is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. As usual, Jesus packs so much teaching into just a few sentences. How often do we find ourselves in the exact same position as the disciples are here? How often have you passed someone on the street who was obviously in need and thought, what did they do to get themselves here? We excuse ourselves from having to intervene because, hey, choices have consequences, right? And they are obviously suffering the consequences of their choices. And just like with the disciples, Jesus chimes in and says, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. This is our nature. There's some really interesting brain chemistry going on here, actually. Did you know that when offered too many choices, your brain will automatically shed the most confusing choices in an effort to conserve calories? Your brain is always trying to conserve the amount of energy your body uses. And this often leads us to be very binary thinkers. Things are either good or bad, right or wrong, at war or at peace. While this way of thinking may have served us well when we had to run away from a saber-toothed tiger at a moment's notice, Jesus recognized the critical importance of looking for the third option. Look instead for what God can do. When we fail to look for the third option, we start down the path that so many before us have stumbled down, looking for someone to blame. If you've never seen Star Wars before, the story gives us a great example of what Jesus is talking about here. In the story, Luke Skywalker is told that the villain, Darth Vader, is consumed by the dark side of the Force, and there is no hope for him. Luke could very easily have assumed this meant he needed to destroy Darth Vader if there would be any hope of saving the galaxy. But instead, he looked for the third option. He saw that there was still good in Vader and nearly gives his own life trying to save him.
Seriously, if you haven't seen Star Wars before, you have my permission to turn this off and go watch it. <laughs> but my point here is that as we move through this Advent season, we recognize that Jesus did not come to save you and me. He came for all people. As we encounter those who are struggling in life, people who have made poor choices and are suffering the consequences of their actions, or people who are fighting an uphill battle against inequality of all kinds, our response should not be to ask what they did to deserve it, but how God can use me to help. Look for the third option. Consider the diversity and creativity of creation. Our God is not a God who says we are either good or bad or saved or forsaken. Our God is a God who loves and wants to be in relationship with us, reconciling us so that we can be that force for love and change in the world around us. A world with limitless possibilities. Let's pray. God, thank you for sending your son who came and taught and then gave his life so that we could have it. God, I pray that we could live by Jesus' Jesus' example, that we could be a people that don't think in binary, that don't think that there are, are only two choices, but God, that we could recognize the wonderful and amazing diversity of your creation and look for you when we encounter choices. We can look at a situation and ask, how can God be seen through this? God, I pray that you would use us to be vessels of your light and love during this Christmas season, to show those who have no hope, to show those who are filled with sadness or weighed down by burdens, God, that there is hope and there is love in you. God, thank you for being that hope and love for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.